Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me here. It's a great honor here to talk to you in Berlin. 1,300 people. Can you imagine if 1,300 people, as we are here today in this room, can stop wasting food? It could be a very interesting thought. For centuries, we have been using graveyards to bury our deceased loved ones. Today, we are using our refrigerators to bury our, our food. The refrigerator graveyard. Let me explain. This is a very, very common trait in the developed countries. We uh, don't really know what we have in the refrigerator and we have in the kitchen, and we go to the shop, we buy more food that we actually need, and then there's those quantity discounts, and you know, you have to buy the food on the quantity discounts because you think that you can save money. And then what happens is that you go home, you put the food in the back of your fridge, and you use some of that, and then you forget about the rest. And time goes, and the food gets rotten and bad, and then you throw it away. Because it's no longer food, it's waste. And you don't even, you know, you don't even feel bad about it, because it turns to waste. And then you go to the store, and you repeat the same pattern again and again and again. Now, many of us don't actually think about our food waste. But um, in the developed countries, 55% of the food that we buy. We buy it directly to feed the garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, this is craziness. We're here in Berlin today. Um, every German, you know, if we have some numbers now, every German citizen, in average, wastes about 98 kilos uh, per year. If we go to the uh, European Union, Every European citizen of the European Union average wastes about 179 kilos per year. And it gets worse. You know, the food waste of Italy, the entire food waste of Italy per year, can feed the entire starving population of Ethiopia. The um, food waste of France can feed the entire population of DR Congo. If we zoom out, we go to China. The yearly food waste in, in China is equivalent to $32 billion. And at the same time, in the very country of China, we have 128 million people who live below the poverty line. And it gets worse. It's getting worse, because when we zoom out and we go to the global food waste, we go to the global scale. You know what? This is depressing. This is a global tragedy. <laughs> yeah, it's so depressing that the scene is falling apart. <laughs> no, really. Um, ladies, the global food wastes can feed every starving child every starving woman, every starving man, three times over. And this is the food that has been thrown out in the trash. This is crazy, and we need to change that scenario. Now, when we think about the food waste, we have this, what I will call, the food waste value chain. Because lots of people, you know, when they think about the food waste, they always think about the food waste in um, the retailers, uh, and in their own homes, because, you know, the media is always putting the focus on the retailers. But actually, the food waste is, is already starting in the beginning of the value chain. You can actually see from farm to the transportation, to packaging, to storing, to transportation, to um, retailers, and then the restaurants and canteens and consumers, and then we throw it away. <laughs> so it is the entire value chain. Now, what is important to remember, that there is, um, because we all have a sweet grandma who always tells us about, you know, stop wasting food. Think of the hungry children of Africa. We all know that. 
My own grandmother told me that. And you know what? Uh, the thing is, we cannot take our leftovers and transport them to Africa because they, they will get bad uh, by the time they reach it. So it's not a solution. Because there are two types of food waste. The one is food waste and the other is food losses. Now here, in the developed countries, like Germany, like Denmark, like Italy, we have food waste. It is happening at the end of the value chain. It's the consumers, it's the canteens and restaurants, and retailers. This is the focus area here, because we have so much food and we waste it. It's, no, it's not North Korea. I mean, if we live in North Korea, it will be some other scenario. Now, if we go to the developing countries, they have food losses. And food losses is happening in the beginning of the value chain. For example, in South Saharan Africa, there are food losses that yearly can feed 48 million people. But that food never reaches to those, to those 48 million people because there's lack of infrastructure, there's a lack of um, storage, and, and that's why they don't have food. <laughs> so this is, this is heartbreaking. Their food losses must be fought differently than our food waste. But the problem is here, and we can all do something about the problem. Now, President Barack Obama, his half-sister talked yesterday on this very stage, and I heard it was a good show. Uh, her half-brother, President Barack Obama, has been here in Berlin for a couple of months ago, uh, weeks ago, and he told about, you know, the climate change. What you need to remember is that, that while we sometimes we feel disempowered to do something about the climate change, because there's so much that could be done. So sometimes we're just powerless. But stop wasting food. This is something you can really do. Because you know, 14% of global carbon emissions are actually caused by food waste. It is the same thing, like for example, if you have apples in your gardens, but you're too lazy to pluck them, or you don't have time, or you don't have you know, neighbors who can help you. So you go to the store, and you buy apples that come from Brazil or Chile or New Zealand, you know, flown all the way from the other side of the world, and then you just dispose half of them because you don't, you know, they get wrinkled and you don't really eat them. This is food waste, and this, this is, you know, stupid food waste that you can cut. So basically, this is something that we all can do. We can all stop wasting food. This is very easy, and I want to brush up a little bit of advices here, so you can already hear 1,300 people, as we're here today, can start thinking about our food waste. Now, first of all, at home, do use your food, because many people, they, they, they forget what they already have in the fridge. They forget what they have in the refrigerator, and when they go to the store, they go like, oh, maybe I can buy this and this, and they already have it. So it's a good thing to have this rotation principle, you know, like rotate the food, put the oldest food in the fridge in front and use it up first. When you go shopping, it's a good idea to have shopping lists because otherwise sometimes you, you, there are quantity discounts, you get a little bit too tempted to buy more than you actually need. When you cook at home, think about the portion sizes, especially in the United States, it's a huge problem. Portion sizes, they're too big. And unfortunately, sometimes people get to it too much. Think about the portion sizes. A good thing is to actually serve small, smaller portions or to have smaller sizes of plates. Some Danish restaurants are actually doing that, and they're cutting 30% of their food waste because, you know, people, they eat with their eyes. <laughs> they put much more on the plate than they actually need, and they just only eat half. So if you have smaller plates, it's a really good trick. You know, it's like nudging trick. And, of course, use your leftovers. Um, in Denmark, I published a book um, some years ago, and it, it was actually an international awarded book for the leftovers. And it started, you know, using the leftovers. It's a very, very good thing, because sometimes, you know, the food actually tastes better under day number two. Now, what also it is important that you know the difference between used by and best before dates. <laughs> And you know, when I go to conference and I talk to people, it's like one or two percent knows the difference about use by best before dates. Let's brush it up. <laughs> use by 
It is the food, for example, fresh meat, fresh fish. You don't eat the food that is past the use-by date because it gets bad. But the best before date, it is bread, it is chocolate, it is cornflakes, it is rice, it is pasta. You don't die after, you know, if it expires just with one week. So remember, best before does not mean toxic after. <laughs> remember that. <laughs> you know, the food waste is also a, um, a cultural thing. This is my first time in Berlin. And this is, you know, a, a very special time for me because although I've been living here in Denmark for 20 years, I'm originally from Russia. I was born in Moscow in the time of the communism. Can you imagine the, the country that could be self-sustainable as Russia? They had to rely on the food help, on the foreign aid. You know, when the, when the world broke down and, you know, the communism collapsed, our family, we received the food help from the West, from the Germany from Denmark. We ate spam. And you know what? We, we treated it, you know, like a jewel. We treated it like, wow, there's a food from the West. We need to t t take small pieces and eat it, you know, don't eat really precious food. And when I came to Denmark and I told it to my classmates, they were like, you ate spam. Jacobo, elf, but Ulega, that, that is so disgusting. And I, and I told my classmates that by that time we had no other food. And we valued food because food was gold. And so when I saw my classmates just tossing out their lunch packages, I was, I was quite mad. And I was mad for many years. So five years ago, I, I had enough, and I started a Facebook group. It's called Stop Wasting Food, Stop Spielemel. Today, we are Denmark's largest consumer movement against food waste. We're all volunteers. We have affected, among other things, lots of things, we have affected that there's a retail chain called Rema, 1,000, Rema Tusen, and they have got rid of all quantity discounts in every shop in the entire country because they don't want to force people to buy more food that they actually need. So now they have single item discounts because of us, because of the ordinary consumers. Now, uh, Coop, the Denmark's biggest retailer chain, in two weeks we are launching, introducing and backing up for Coop uh, to introduce um, wonky and bendy carrots in the shops. Yeah, because it's a good thing. People are all, look at the, you know, at fruits and vegetables in the stores. They're all perfect. They're like supermodels. I mean, in reality, we people, we are tall, we're short, we're uh, big, we're small, we have spots, we have freckles. But look at the bananas, look at the apples, look at the salads, they're all perfect. So now we are actually introducing the fruits and vegetables in the Danish stores that are not perfect, which is good, because it tastes the same. <laughs> so, um, actually, what we, we do is we inspire people everywhere. You know, I've been writing like 100 articles in three opinion editorials with ministers, and I'm, I'm talking panel debates with Connie Hedegaard and United Nations and uh, collaborating with the Euro European Union project. This is a whole huge thing. But what is important to remember about food waste, it is something you all can do something about, because it is not difficult. When you start thinking about your food waste, you can actually think that you can save money. You can save environment. You can contribute to a better future. And it's a very, very, very small action. And if we all can do that, can you imagine what could happen to our planet? So, my plea to you today, my advice, is to be the change you want to see in the world. You cannot change the entire world, but you can change yourself. And by changing yourself, other people will change with you. So ladies and gentlemen, stop wasting food. Thank you.